As society looks for new ways to treat mental distresses of all varieties, one doctor in particular, Dr. Sam Ivey, has found a most novel way to see if his patients are ready to be released. A work release program unlike any other has been put into motion, one that sees the good doctor, himself formerly a DJ, inviting the very inmates to run the show, give testimonies to screen phone calls, schedule interviews, and prove that they can handle a job, responsibilities, and all of that with temperance. Since the loony bin itself sits on the top of hill, Dr. Sam I.B. has simply put up an antenna and, of course, with the internet, now not only can Canton, Ohio hear the progress being made, but so can the entire world. Welcome to the Looney Bin. That's right, man. This is Buddy Puff. Welcome to the Looney Bin, man. If you're waiting to hear from Dr. Sam, he'll be out here before very long, dude. He's fixing the video and censoring some of the curse words and turning the video into audio so that it makes it easier when you're trying to see it on the radio, man. Buddy, that, that's the single worst intro to a show that I've ever seen. Nah, dude, it's the single worst intro that you've ever heard. Told you it was confusing. Oh, for crying out loud, would you just go on? Well, we got, we got Marty Friedman, man, which a lot of people know from the band Cacophony, but he's doing solo work now. What, uh, buddy, most people are going to know Marty Friedman from Megadeth. Who? Oh, for crying out loud, it is finish the intro before anybody tunes out. Oh, we also got music as the headliner of that tour that Dr. Sam got to go to and do the interview. Headliner and on the show with music tonight, Queen's Richie. Oh my god, buddy, that's Queen's Reich. Yeah. 
Boom! Yes! There you have it! That is Trauma, who you are about to hear an interview from, done by yours truly, Dr. Sam I.B., here at the Looney Bin! 102.5 FM, the Opa Radio, that was From Here to Hell. Before that, it was Walk Away, which is the newest single from them. Um, I, I take it that uh, Buddy Puff took us into the intro and everybody knows what's going on? I, I guess you could say that, yeah. I'm afraid to ask. All right, friends, let's get into it. You heard two in a row. You heard a beautiful two in a row to get you started for the interview. Here it is, my interview with Trauma, exclusively on oh, the Looney Bin, dude. All right, guys, introduce yourselves and welcome to Dr. Sam's Looney Bin. I'm Chris from Trauma. I'm Brian from Trauma. And tonight, friends, it is Queensryche Marty Friedman, which many of you know from Megadeth and or his escapades in Japan, and Trauma. I wanted to ask, um, since you guys were around at the heyday of this kind of music, and then recently, like he said, around 2013, you put it back together, since that time, the internet and everything you can dream of has changed. What is the most important thing that you would tell a band in 2023 today that they absolutely have to get right? They need money. Buddy, a lot of money. Is it mostly for marketing or what, where all it? Everything. Yeah. How much of it is a write-off? I get that question a lot. Like they say, it's a business expense, so the gas is a write-off, but then they we're, say... We're not tax people. I mean, you, you do what you got to do, you know. It's hard to say. Yeah. You know, the, the band would have to be incorporated, you know, which costs money to do. So, but as far as your question is concerned, um, just get out there, play gigs, uh, get active on social media, uh, get your music played on Spotify, your videos on YouTube, all that kind of fun stuff. Spend your money wisely. Yeah. Um, what are some of the uh, unexpected things that people are going to hear on this CD, considering there's so many bands, I think, that sound like they're trying to be heavier than everybody else, but you guys, from what I've heard of the new stuff, have kept that groove, and, you, you know, it's, it's the ability to, you know, something novel, like understand the lyrics, that kind of thing. Um, how do you guys approach that songwriting? Do you keep that in mind when you're doing it, or how's that come together? Uh, basically, the... The songs are written, written with a uh, vocalist in mind. Um, we just kind of go from there, throw a lot of ideas around uh, until we have something that is uh, worth recording. You know, it takes, it takes a while. It's, a, it's quite a lengthy process. Did you write the lyrics for the project? Um, actually, uh, Donnie, the, the old singer, he wrote half of them yeah and then uh rochelle uh which is steve's wife she wrote a lot of lyrics this, uh, on on this record our guitar player's wife helped out with some lyrics yeah wonderful do you guys have topics in mind when you come up with a riff or do you come up with a riff and then they let... all they all had ideas when i came in because i came in when the album was pretty much you know being yeah. written with song titles and all that stuff so yeah, we, we were right in the writing process when Donnie Hillier unfortunately passed away. So we had to kind of, with the addition of Brian Allen, we kind of had to go back and tweak some stuff. Um, I helped out with some stuff, but not and much. Stuff like that. Not much. You know. Um, to be, I, I wasn't super familiar with the fan when I got lucky enough to come tonight. Um, what would you say to new fans? Say they find the interview, perhaps, we're getting ready to do your music on the show. What's what's it like when they hear you for the first time or see you guys for the first time? Um, different things that people have noted, different parts of songs that just make the crowd go, yeah! Just in your face. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's raw. It's real. Um, we just get out there and kick the shit out of it. No backing Every tracks, night. nothing like that. Amen. Very yeah. nice. We plug yeah. in and go. Exactly. Uh, do you have any uh, odd Cliff Burton stories? <laughs> I, I have, well, Overton, the original guitar player, told me a funny story. Okay. Um, of course, I wasn't there, but the original, one of the original guitar players with Chris, um, his name is Mike Overton, and uh, he told me about a, 
uh, Cliff Burton's story, how they got the name Scratch and Scream off the first record. And Donnie wrote the song on what happened with Cliff at the Troubadour, I think it was. I think so. It was Troubadour. Apparently, uh, there was some dude looking for his girlfriend. Some guy was one of the band members or something like that. He's looking for his woman. But meanwhile, Cliff was across the street banging her. <laughs> and uh, so Donnie was, they're all freaking out. They're all trying to get a hold of Cliff. Cliff, God, get out of here. This dude's all pissed off as he's banging his chick. Yeah, it's a funny story, I thought. So that's where Donnie, I guess, came up with the whole idea of Scratch and Scream, you know, the whole lyrics. and Because I was like, what's this? I'm reading these lyrics. And I, and I asked Chris about it. He's like, no, he goes, message Overton. So I messaged Overton. And he told me the whole story. And I was like, oh, my God, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that, is the, that is the best origina- origination for a song or album title I think I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. last question i guess i'll give it to both of you what is one thing that you have not been asked by one of these annoying people behind the camera like myself that you haven't but you're surprised that you haven't or anything you'd like to say to the world 
Anything you've amazed that you haven't already been asked? Oh. Any any questions that media hasn't asked? Do you think, huh? That's never come up, or I, I, it's odd that nobody's ever asked this. I think the oddest question somebody asked me recently is, what superhero would you like to be? That's funny, because somebody just asked Max like, that when I interviewed him. What do you have to do with any kind of interview? You what would you pick? That's what they asked Max. It must be the same guy. I don't even, I don't even remember what I picked. I don't know. <laughs> the truth. I don't know. I, I don't know. So, Max picked he wanted to be invisible. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's really not a superhero, though. No, that's not going to help as a front man. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we've been asked all kinds of things. Um, you know. I don't know. All right, I'll go with it then. What would your superhero be? He didn't pick one. Now you get Superhero? It. Yeah, we'll go with it. It's already started. It seems to be a trend. I don't know what it is, but it's coming up a lot. The Audie Murphy. Audie Murphy. He was a real hero. Friends, you're listening to 102.5 FM, The Looney Bin, here with Trauma. Thank you guys for coming out. I really appreciate it. There you have it. All of it, as a matter of fact, the trauma interview done by Dr. Sam I.B. After the story of romance and affection that was given, we did play Scratch and Sniff. Now it is on to Morty Friedman, but not before a word from our sponsor. I'd like to go ahead and invite you out to Kyle's Clean Car Care. Here's what we go ahead and do. We're going to go ahead and take your trash. We're going to go ahead and throw it right out the damn window. The same thing that you always do. The only difference is we're not going to get busted for it. Yeah, that's right. Let's chuck it right out the window. And if you happen to be one of these woke weenies who spend all their time worrying about the environment, the environment, then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take your trash and we're going to throw it out in the residential area. Because if somebody else has to clean it up, it's not litter. It's just rude. That's right. You've reached the specialists here at Kyle's Clean Carb Care. Make sure you ask for the best. That's right. Just start right out the window. Uh Uh-huh. I'm perfect. Absolutely perfect.
spin. Could you not love it? It is Marty Friedman. That is Senbun Zakura from Tokyo Jukebox 3. Before that, it was, I believe, Kaze Ga Fuiteru. Dude, what's that mean in English? I don't know. I don't speak Japanese. Well, I still want to know what it means. I just keep going on with the whole show. He'll never figure it out. Well, friends, I, I want to say... His music had a way of touching people. Sometimes people who maybe showed up at the show 
anodonic, for a lack of better words. You mean like that guy that used to play keyboards for passing time? Yeah, him in particular. Something about Marty's music really, really touched a lot of people. And I, I can't... They're my favorite live act now. Probably even more so than Animals as Leaders. Dude, I got an idea. Why don't we ask Dr. Louchy what the song was? Buddy, Dr. Louchy is from India. That's why I know that he'll understand what was being said, dude. I am thinking that you are the stupidest human being who has ever lived.
This is Michael Wilson of Queensland, and you're listening to the Lean Bit. 102.5 FM Neopop. Yeah.
I, I did it just for you, Buddy Puff, because I could trust you to start the show off properly. Oh, when you hear it on replay, you, you may want to shut up, dude. Nobody's asking you a word. What were you saying? I played Black Cat for you. Cacophony, man. Unlike that other uh, Megadeth, he was with... Oh, yeah, we played them on the show before. We might have mentioned that, buddy. We might have mentioned that. Uh, there, before, after that, I should say, is the brand new Queensryche, as promised. That is Sick Death. It's spelled S-I-C-D-E-T-H. Um, I want to play another Queensryche song. But I'm worried that it's going to get pulled off of YouTube, even though I was asked to do the show. Dude, let me explain that to everybody so that it's not... Con no, no, you're not explaining any... Invisible Man, would you explain to the audience what I'm talking about? You, well, yes, I'll do it concisely. Buddy is so long-winded. No, well, what he's saying is Dr. Sam was sent to cover the Queensryche show, of course, as you heard there, and, and Morty Friedman and Trauma. And even though the people associated with the Queensryche tour and the Queensryche management, you see, they sent him, but it could flag when he posted the copyright violation. So, you know, in that case, even though he was sent by them, they will say that he has violated their copyrights, so the people that's... Dude, I thought you said I was long-winded! This is hopeless, guys. This is hopeless. <laughs>
I told you I was going to do it. I'm not going to go with the mainstream songs. I went with Queen's Reich Inside Out from the verdict. That is Todd Latour. He took over for Jeff Tate. So I played Jeff Tate's version uh, with Queen's Reich, of course, doing I Am I. I was going to do Empire, so a certain Pookie is very lucky that I changed my mind on that, just for her, because I'm torn between that, Empire, and a couple other ones. Um, I also did the live version because... Why you did that? Because, you see, there's less chance of it coming being taken down from YouTube. You see, the band invited you along. With the, the, see, the people that manage that... You, you've already made that um, very clear, Invisible Man, in, in, in the most con concise manner. Thank you. Um, I think it was pretty fair. Yes, I guess I also did a uh, Todd Latour song. But it was Queensryche that I went to, and that's the way Queensryche sounds now. If, which, you know, amazing, by the way, and very, very, very close. They're as close together as uh, Journey's new frontman is. Some people probably left the show as I wrote in Blasting News, and you can read it at Blasting News. Queens, what? Queens, Queensryche. Last name, Digangi, D-I-G-A-N-G-I. You can find it. I think I was fair to both singers. Absolutely fair and square right down to the middle. Yeah, dude, all three parts. What? Friends, we're almost out of time. If you want to donate, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. That is the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. And again, if I go to a Jeff Tate show, then it will be a majority Jeff Tate. Yeah, absolutely fair and square. Right down the middle. And less chance of it being taken down. Because sometimes the people that tell you to show up and you do exactly what, what was asked of you. And you do it very well, but the video comes down.